Taco Bell sign I got. I'll show you this in a little bit. It's clunky and loud, so I'm going to move it out of the way for now. Taco Bell history. Uh, this is the history that they list on their website, but I have a ton of additional facts, so we're going to dig deep into a lot of rabbit holes here. Uh, we start out with Glenn Bell's first restaurant. Yes, believe it or not, Taco Bell is started by a guy named Glenn Bell, and that's where the Bell and Taco Bell comes from. Here's a picture of Glenn sticking his head out a window. Uh, asking somebody if they want fries with that, and then be like, we're not going to make fries for another 70 years. The first date on the website, 1951, it says he was inspired by his friends and neighbors. They were right across the street at the Mitla Cafe, and he created his own version of the Crunchy Taco. Here is the Mitla Cafe. They were around since the 1930s. They're still around. They were on Route 66. It is no longer Route 66, but Route 66 used to go all the way across over to the Santa Monica Pier, and Mitla Cafe is there. You can go there today and try their tacos. Uh, this is a look inside the restaurant. They're leaning way into that Route 66 thing. They don't want you to forget. Uh, they have good-looking tacos. Glenn is selling tacos at the Bell's Hamburger Stand across the street from Mitla, and he said he wasn't really cutting into their business because he said anybody that was Spanish-speaking was still buying their tacos across the street. If they came to him, they bought hot dogs and hamburgers, but he was able to sell people that had never had Mexican food his tacos, and they really enjoyed them. 1962, he opens his first actual Taco Bell restaurant in Downey, California, and according to the Taco Bell website, his customers called them Tacos. Tacos. This is a look at that first restaurant. Here's a look at the original menu. You had your frijoles, you had your tostadas, you had a chili burger. Uh, you also had burritos, two different types apparently, and tacos. Look at those low, low prices. And then you can see their uh, beverages. You got your Coke, your orange, your root beer, and your coffee. The restaurant eventually changed hands. wasn't owned by Taco Bell anymore. And then eventually they went under and they were like, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna raise this building." And Taco Bell said, "Oh no, you're not." And they took it. They strapped it to the back of a truck and drove it down the highway all the way over to their headquarters. So it sits behind their headquarters. It's a tiny little building. They haven't figured out what they're gonna do with it, but at least they saved it. I think that's pretty awesome. Retired L.A. policeman Kermit Becky becomes the first franchisee and opens a restaurant in Torrance. Now I could not find a picture picture of Kermit Becky, but I looked into the name Kermit, and interestingly, Kermit was a top 500 name until right around the time The Muppet Show started, and then it drastically dropped. 1967, Taco Bell opens their 100th restaurant. This one was located just a few miles away from Disneyland. That's all I'm concerned about, so I want to show you. Not too far, not too far. If you look at the picture and you see the building in the background there, look at this building. See this building in the background at the top, it's still here. See that? And then you can see that it's right next to a newer looking Taco Bell. Here is a side shot of it. This is the oldest picture I could find of it on Google Street Views. 1970, Taco Bell goes public. They had 325 restaurants. Uh, here is a menu from just a year later and it says they had 450. So rapidly expanding at this point. Now this brochure, Great Eating from Taco Bell, actually showed you all of the menu items and told you how to pronounce them. The taco, the enchirito, had your burrito, burrito. In 1978, Glenn Bell sells the 868 Taco Bell restaurants to PepsiCo. Now, Pepsi had always been the smaller version of Coke, right? You always had Coke was the big one. Pepsi was cheaper. And for a while, Pepsi outsold Coke in like the 50s. But it was because it was so much cheaper that they were actually, people were buying it and then serving it to their to their guests at their home and being like, oh, no, no, this is a Coke. You know, so it was, they were known as the cheaper version. So they didn't like that. They had their big cola wars in the 80s. But it was in 78 that they decided to kind of branch into owning restaurants, which was an interesting idea. Uh, the reason they were doing this was because a lot of restaurants would serve Coke and Coke was the preferred thing. Coke was what the majority of the people wanted. Pepsi was thought as as the secondary brand. So they couldn't get enough deals to get into the restaurants. So they had the smart idea, let's buy the restaurants and then they have to serve our soda. And it worked. Today, uh, Pepsi 
owns Yum Brands. There's, we'll get into a little bit about that. But uh, A&W Root Beer is part of it. Uh, Colonel Sanders, Long John Silver, Pizza Hut, and Taco Bell. Here's a look at this. I think this is interesting. PepsiCo today valued at $220 billion, which is not far off from Coca-Cola's $227. So Pepsi uh, kind of is, is a real player right alongside Coca-Cola now. Here's a list of all the restaurants that you can see that serve Coke and the ones that serve Pepsi. There are some exceptions to all of these restaurants. Uh, we were looking at, uh, I think it's the Mall of America, the McDonald's that became Hulk Hogan's Pasta Mania and is now a Popeye's. That place has always served Pepsi. Whatever it was, it served Pepsi because in the Mall of America, you got to serve Pepsi. That's just one of the one of the rules they have. But you can see Pepsi's got those brands on that side. All the other ones go on the other side. But Pepsi, smart, owning those restaurants. 1984, they introduced the taco salad and the Taco Bell Grande. Here's the taco salad. Looks like a taco salad. Taco Bell Grande was just a big taco. It was like this big. Here's a look at the uniforms back then. Very different. I do like the uniforms now. Uh, they've got the baseball cap and they've got the black shirt. Also in 84, and this is not listed on their website, but that's when they purchased Pup and Taco. And all of the Pup and Tacos became Taco Bells, except for, as we learned on this channel, a few in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which became Pop and Taco. This particular Pup and Taco is a Taco Bell today, and I think they might be using some of the original building. Uh, I want to show you this. First of all, if you look behind it and to the side, you can see two other buildings that are still there today. If you look, this building here in the background, like see this building here with those uh, with those weird little panels, you can actually see it right back there behind the uh, Pup and Taco. But look at how the Pup and Taco, look at the framing of the building there and the windows are all on the left-hand side. And then here is the oldest Google Street View I could find of it. And you could see the building's in the exact same spot. It's just as wide so it's a very narrow little taco bell and the window was all the way on the left now today the window goes all the way across but i think that's i think that they use the same actual structure and they've just built onto it i think when they turned it into a taco bell from the pup and taco right i think they got rid of that that arched roof but i think they kept the same building 1989, Taco Bell pioneers the concept of linking fast food to movies. This was their Batman promotion. Uh, here's some pictures from it. Look at this. They got Batman uh, cinnamon twists there and Batman sodas. Look at this. The bat light would appear over the Taco Bell. So Taco Bell would be summoning Batman. Like, it, like the Batman thought there was a crime going on at the Taco Bell. And so he, he rushed over. There's Batman just... Downing some, eating some tacos. Here's a promotional picture. I just like that because it looks like Batman's working the register. 1990, Taco Bell introduced the 59, 79, 99 value menu. Uh, I remember this one. Little Richard did a piano version of this where he was like, 59, 79, 99. Here is what you could get for 59 cents. You get a crunchy taco or a soft taco bean burrito. I like the Pintos with cheese. Is that like a small car? It's a small car. 1991, they came into Hungry People on the Go and introduced the Taco Bell Express. Here's one. They were like, Taco Bell Express would be like at the mall. You know, if you went to the mall, they had a little Taco Bell Express at the airport, maybe. 1992, Taco Bell Foundation unveils the Teen Supreme program with the Boys and Girls Club. And that means they've taken these teens and added diced tomatoes and sour cream to make them supreme teens. 1995 Taco Bell sponsors the ESPN X Games. It's like, whatever. So they put this on the website. You can see like their logo was in the background. But what I really like about this was they actually had a video game you could play. And that sounds pretty cool. A Taco Bell X Games video game. 1997. So this is interesting. It says, as the new parent of Taco Bell, Tricon declares its independence from the PepsiCo conglomerate. I declare independence. freedom. That's what it's about. Freedom and tacos. 1998, Gorditos burst into the fast food scene and become a nationwide sensation and inspired this lady with the Gorditos and quesadillas. This is, this is the, the greatest, like, 
heavy metal album font I've ever seen. So the next fact they had was that Taco Bell, when the Mir space station was going to fall apart, I guess, and on re-entry, Taco Bell put out a big mat and said, if it hits here, everybody in the, in the United States gets a free taco. It didn't hit there. 2002, Taco Bell Foundation hit $10 million for donations to the teens with the Teen Supreme program. And if the sour cream and diced tomatoes hit them directly, everybody gets a taco. 2004, Taco Bell introduces the Mountain Dew Baja Blast. And this has kind of spiraled into being its own thing. You can get uh, Baja Blast lip balm if you want. Baja Blast hot dogs. Baby food. Everything. 2005, the Crunchwrap Supreme becomes Taco Bell's most successful product. Crunchwrap Supreme. Mm -mm -mm. I love it. Love the smell of a crunch wrap. 2010, uh, they launched TacoBell.com. By the way, I do a video every day at 2 o'clock, so make sure to come back. And if you like this, be a Fonzie and give it a thumbs up and go, hey, as you press the button. 2012, Taco Bell helicopters 10,000 tacos to Alaska. So why did they do this stunt? Well, somebody had gone around and passed out flyers in this little town in Alaska where they only had one restaurant. It was a Subway. And they put out flyers and said, hey, uh, Taco Bell is coming and there will be lots of jobs. And people got very excited. And they were like, we're going to get Taco Bell and we're going to get jobs. It turned out to be a hoax and Taco Bell heard about it. And so what they did was they helicoptered in a truck. Look at this, a food truck. And they just gave out tacos. I think this is wonderful. I love this kind of stuff. 2017, wedding bells started ringing at the Taco Bell Cantina. Uh, look at this for... $775, you can get married. You get a half hour in the Taco Bell Cantina and you can get married. You get his and her uh, wedding shirts. It's fantastic. There it is, Mr. and Mrs. It's great. I love that. They also uh, did a collab with Forever 21. 2018, they launched the Nacho Fries, which changed the world. This was a pop-up store, Taco Bell 2032. It was inspired by Demolition Man, where in the future, all restaurants are Taco Bell because Taco Bell won the fast food wars. And they actually had the purple color. This is the one that appeared. This is the pop-up. It was done for San Diego Comic-Con. But the restaurant in the movie used the purple color scheme, which Taco Bell was not using at the time when the movie was made. And they, they were inspired by the movie to change the look of the restaurant. It's crazy. So here is this menu. I got this on eBay many, many years ago. Like when eBay first started, this was one of the things that I was like, yeah, I, I need that. Uh, and actually you can change the numbers. I'm going to show you the back of this. Let me show you the front first. You can see on the back here uh, that they have the numbers. They're all there. And then when you use it from the front, if you wanted to change the price on this, you would simply pull this down or up. Now, I used to goof around with this menu all the time. I'd be sitting there and I'd fiddle with it. And then one day it made me sad that the numbers weren't right. So I spent like two hours searching through old pictures of Taco Bells until I found one where it appeared to be the right numbers because they had all of these products on it. And so I was like, well, now I know that these are at least the right numbers for that location. But look at that. And your border specialties, you got your Mexican pizza. Your big beef Mexamelt. Some good stuff. So tomorrow, I'm going to get in the car and I'm driving to Virginia because I'm doing uh, Nightmare Weekend. First ever Nightmare Weekend. Going to be selling my horror-themed comedy book, uh, which is called Ghost Memoirs, Disney After Death. Fantastic book, by the way. If you haven't read it, go on Amazon, pick one up. Uh, but I'll be signing copies of it there. And on the way... I'm going to drive by a Taco Bell that I heard about from two listeners of the show, 
Michael and Jessica, and they told me about this, and this is exactly the kind of stuff I'm into. They said, you know, there's a Taco Bell near us that still looks like it's 1995. And I was like, ooh, ooh, is that on the way? And they were like, it is on the way. So I am stopping there. So that'll be on the channel tomorrow, All Things Go Well. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that. We're also going to be going before that to the cemetery from the Blair Witch Project. So that's pretty cool. And um, we're going to be by the sign where she's like, this is Burkittsville, formerly Blair. So I'm going to go to that, and then we'll be going there, and then all the way into Nightmare, and it's going to be a great weekend. Going to have a lot of videos of Nightmare Weekend, so I'm going to cover each day. Also, I'm going to be going to filming locations from The Jackal, from Finnegan Begin Again, the uh, uh, Mary Tyler Moore movie. Also going to hopefully eat at a restaurant that either Guy Fieri or Gordon Ramsay ate at. So I'm not sure which one I'm going to, but hopefully one of those restaurants. Also, I'm going to be stopping in Washington, D.C. on the way home and uh, hopefully eat at Old Ebbets Grill, which was featured in In the Line of Fire, but is also a historic and famous restaurant. And uh, I'm hoping to stop again. You may remember last time I was in Virginia, I stopped at the birthplace of Secretariat, but the gate was closed. Uh, but I'm hoping to go back when it's open. So I, I think I've got that planned out correctly. So look for all of that in the coming days. Right now, a box is going to pop up here. And one over here, you can choose either one. Because I'm in both. I'm going to go try to hang my Taco Bell sign back over the bar. I'll see you tomorrow. We're going to Taco Bell. We're going to get some gorditas.